as we did the street version of our intake manifold for our H22, the natural progression is that we will port it into a race version because that's what we plan to run and use eventually. We will discuss about certain things like plenum, the way we adapt things and all the changes that's necessary, and of course, a link and the direction to where we buy our stuff. And of course, everyone's favorite, runner length talk and discussion about widening the entries in the long term and the short term. anything let me show you guys what we did with the plan because if we flatten the bottom part i mean the dividers we will punch in through the iecv port wait let me show you closer here we will punch a hole if we flatten this and we gotta have it welded so that's too much work so what we did was round off the leading edge this way when we get the spacer ready we can taper it into a knife edge on the tail end so that's not like a teardrop so that's gonna flow good it's not gonna be a hindrance to flow so hey that's it that's the plenum all right and before we delve further, let me show you this because, you know, hey, it's worth showing you guys. Remember earlier, we showed you this plenum and we're actually not yet sure if we're going to use this or use the OEM plenum or just fabricate another one. But definitely not hood entry because this is for a street car. Okay, let me line up here. So we cut off the plenum here, right? And so and then we chopped it onto the slant this way it's gonna flow even better and let me show you something on that wait let me show you hold on all right i used an electric tape this way it's more visible for you guys there you go we chopped the plenum on the end here look and then slant it this way runner number one gets fed really good so yep the throttle is on this side wait let me show you guys closer look it lo actually looks pretty neat right but you know we can still just run the oem plenum but it's significantly smaller even if you add spacer whereas with this one hey it's free to add even more spacer before even reaching the hood so this might work really well and sorry about the rain guys you know tropical country and here's the stock plenum it may seem the same size or as big but technically it's a lot smaller volume inside and look you can see even if you add a one inch spacer this plenum might even be still bigger so and that's without a spacer so imagine if you add a spacer right so yep this is definitely one of the good options that we have when we start building the h22 we got the plenum or the plenum comes from ross machine racing and let me show you guys the website okay it's rossmachineracing.com obviously let's go and here they have bits and pieces of stuff that you can use to fabricate the manifold including the fuel rail we got that plenum but you know, when we got that, suddenly they started to introduce the, the semi-round one. So, hey, I was like, I should have gotten that one. This is it. Look at all the parts they offer. You know, when you're fabricating an intake, let's say even from scratch, they might be a good source for you guys to check out. So, hey, it's worth sharing, right? I mean, you know, just so that you guys, if you guys feel like modifying your own plenum and whatnot, this is it okay wait oh sorry 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 i pressed the wrong thing all right okay now let's go but you know let me remind you guys 
if this video is actually doing a lot good for you, hit the like button, will you? It helps generate more traffic for the video. It lets, you know, the video get spread out more to a bigger audience. And hey, subscribe if you haven't, you know? Remember on the earlier H22 intake manifold video, we talked about runner length and short turn, which you can click right here for that. And we discussed that even the intake manifold has a short turn and long turn as well as the intake ports. Now on this race mod, we cut off the divider. So the short turn on the intake manifold is significantly less. But when you think about it, the long turn on the intake port itself still exists. So there's still a difference of speed between short turn and long turn. So that's why we still widen the runner entry on the intake manifold. And this is how it looks without the pleno, of course, just to give you, give you better visual. And here, I want to talk about something. We cut the divider this way because the short turn and long turn is of closer to equal length. And here you can see it better the red line and the blue line when you straighten it out the length seems to be more equal from one another sure others would say no it doesn't matter and all that but when you think about it the shortest path becomes the length of the harmonics measurement so it matters or it doesn't well you decide but maybe that's why it's not just a plenum that you're gaining power from, but also from a divider that's properly cut or trimmed. Now let's compare with the one that we did previously. This is how it is without chopping the divider. It actually performed really good, you know, but hey, you know us, we want it better and with more RPMs and obviously more power. Hey, we're car guys. We always want more. We always want it faster, right? And before we go even deeper, here it is. You can see this is going to be flowing really good. And the thing here is that, you know, we've done this for a fellow in France, in Australia, in Norway, Ireland, and the US. So I'm not saying I know it all. I'm just saying I've had chances like that to keep developing what we actually do right now. So, hey. This is gonna be exciting as hell for me you know because of course this is gonna be a personal h22 project in the future okay not now not soon because i still gotta do deal with my d series and then the b series and then finally this so let's go even further with this what i'm saying it's funny because when you think about it this is perfect to be digitized in order for you or for us to do provide this as cnc but obviously we don't have a cnc here but what i'm saying is you can digitize a crappy port or crappy work in the end it'll still be looking good because it's cnc so what i'm saying is just because it's cnc you gotta double check the origin if it because there's a lot of good places that provide cnc work so hey what i'm saying is just be wiser because it's your money you're spending you know now here's the runner entry side from the plenum you can see how we divided or chopped the divider and like as mentioned earlier we chopped it at this certain angle or design so that the runners are more equal than before and let me show you the flange side or the head side of the manifold we usually don't finish until the last bit this way we can port match it to whichever head it's gonna go to so we usually leave it like this this way it'll never be bigger than the head or the intake ports but you can see it's almost done all the way through but it, it needs a little bit more passes you know with a sanding roll just to get it all cleaned up and let's let me, let me try to zoom i mean focus it for you guys so you can see wait Oh crap, it won't focus. Sorry guys, I'm just using my phone here. So you can see it's gone really good, right? All the way to the entry. So you know this is going to provide all the air the cylinder head wants and the engine. And here you can see it's, it's taking good shape. Right. Oh, sorry. You can see here. And the runner 
it's gonna be really really good and actually efficient you know see how it tapers in and we actually widened the roof or the end the short turn of the entry you, you can see here we actually widened it you know i mean it's not really that visible through the video but when you look close you would know and I, of course when i was sporting it i was concentrating on widening the top entry so hey you know this is gonna be really really good right and on this shot you can actually see the taper is actually pretty pretty good especially after we cut the divider right you can reference on the picture that we drew before right and then go back to the image look it's right there you know we could have changed the way we would cut the divider but we believe this as we measured the short turn and the long turn to just to find the right proper angle to chop now here's a comparison of the street manifold earlier on and then now to how it is the race version which we would actually use you know here it is you know it looks really good right i mean hey compared to the street one even the street version actually runs really really good it's just that you know like i said before we're gonna build something way more than you know way more off the hook sorry i mean you know way more stronger or way more wild than usual so why would we develop something that's you know subpar right i mean there's no point in trying to push the limits when you're building it lower because okay initial plan for the h22 is to run a 95 stroke crank from an accord or f22 and then re-sleeve the block but we're gonna run just 88 millimeter bore so that there's room to go bigger so it's going to be 88, 95, and possibly either Pro 3 from Skunk 2 or TB Motorworks Cam, you know. Because we're going to see how far we can go or how far we can push on pump gas. Now the keen eye would notice the finish that we do here is a lot smoother than usual because this is simply dry flow it's not wet flow because there's no fuel you know so you got to get it smooth just enough to improve flow not too smooth like glass but hey as many of you guys noticed that we like to sneak in like a a special tech or info in between the video or in the middle of the video here's one i was lucky enough to be able to talk to randy monroe through pm of the honda tech forum back in the day or should i say blessed because we started talking about engines exhaust and then he showed me this what he did for eric aguilar the first b series to run nines they actually did a plenum for the gsr manifold because i remember zef commented about you know about what they can do or if it's possible to rework the gsr manifold here it is and of course another commenter did say they got it, their manifold the gsr manifold and to their surprise they didn't lose much low end but it worked pretty decent you know so hey the late randy monroe is actually randy monroe fabrications also known as rmf so he was the man behind those headers you know so he knows his stuff. And here is Eric Aguilar's engine bay without the one piece front end. That's the GSR manifold, but look at the Ram Air. And you know, you guys can click here for a discussion about the Ram Air velocity stack that we did and we're planning to test. Funny, because it's like a coincidence. Next up is we will have a video talking about my EG4 door or ESI, about the setup, the plans for it and of course a lot of details that i know you guys would love especially this intake and you can click here for a video on this which of course we plan to dyno and then compare it to a regular simota intake or a short ram and then a cold air and eventually 
compared to a RAM air. This way, we know what's up and we know what's working. And of course, we know if our design improved or did not, you know, it, that's that's all about research and development. So, hey, the video of this ESI is going to be here.